Hey everybody, I thought I'd put a video up. Uh, in our church services lately, we are working through the book of Romans. And the theme for Romans, I think, is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, where Paul writes that the righteous will live by faith. And it's a, a, a faith in the gracious love of God for us. It's not just faith in anything, but in the gracious love of God for us. And he's unfolding this throughout the book. In this last Sunday, we focused on Romans 3. And in Romans 3, I think it has a couple of very powerful uh, things. Of, he says the issue about being righteous in the world. And that is that we're under the power of sin. And later he'll say, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, the idea of sin in our world is kind of misunderstood often. It's kind of a narrow, moral focused in Western Christianity where we've done some sexual thing wrong or something like that. Paul, Paul's version of sin is much more expansive. The word sin literally means miss the mark. So if you can imagine someone like me taking archery practice and I draw the bow back with the string, uh, with the arrow notched and I let fly, I'm trying to hit the bullseye. That's the mark. But in trying to do that, I'm not a very good archer, so I miss. I might hit the dirt in front of the target. I might shoot over the target. And if I shoot enough, I'll get some on the target. Maybe I'll even hit the mark once in a while. But what Paul is saying by saying we're under the power of sin is that there are forces in the culture, in society, in our families, and even within us, in our own souls of greed and whatever, that keep us from hitting the mark of what God would have us do and be, the kind of loving a caring people that God would have us be in the world. We are stuck under these forces of sin. So give me, I'll give you an example of that. I think it's really kind of woven into modern culture that we're stuck under this power of sin. In fact, you can't be a modern person and not get caught up in it because there's too many ways uh, we're hooked into things. Example, single-use plastic. Hot topic lately single-use plastic. And I've used it recently. I've used a plastic fork. I've gotten a grocery bag of little plastic grocery bags at a grocery store. Well, on the front end of that plastic, of course, are plants that turn petroleum into plastic products. A lot of those plants are in southern Louisiana. And they're fairly polluting. In fact, there are areas of Louisiana they're cordoned off with dead trees and dead animals. And there's just a dead area because of those factories. And on the back end of that, of course, is we don't dispose of it very well. And often it gets out into waste and blowing around and it gets caught up, and particularly in our oceans. There's huge chunks of plastic floating around out there. So much so that the smallest creatures of the ocean, the ones that eat the phytoplankton, are the zooplankton, the beginning of the animal food chain, if you will. And they found even in the Arctic, they have lots of plastic in them. And recently, of course, the largest creature in the ocean is one of them has washed up full of plastic, dead from ingesting so much plastic. That God would have us be people who are good stewards of the world, and yet here we are with all this plastic, and not being the caretakers, missing the mark. Now, people listening to this, I, I'm imagining you can have one of two different reactions. One is kind of, well, pastor. You know, you know, it's a little part of Louisiana. Things could be worse. You know, um, they're very convenient and useful, this single-use plastic. I mean, what are we going to do without them? Or, or you might think, well, you know, we can clean it up. It's not a big deal, you know, and kind of dismissive of the fact that we're really involved in missing the mark. One reaction. Another reaction is to say, oh, pastor, you're right on. This is a real big issue and we need to do something about single-use plastic. In fact, I'm not going to use it anymore. I'm going to live a sustainable life. And in this instance, of course, you're owning the problem and trying to do something about it. But I think in both those cases, what we're doing is what Paul talked about in Romans 3, and that is we're trying to justify ourselves. It's my own actions or my minimizing of the problem, and I'll be right and good. Either way, what Paul is announcing here is there's another way to be right and good, to be righteous in the world, to be justified. And that is by just sitting and enjoying, and drinking in and trusting the gracious love of God for us. That in, in that gracious love of God for us, we can know that God loves us and that the loving God isn't going to hold even our worst deeds against us. 
that there's just simply this love that floats in. So today, as you make your way through this day, that you might just find time just to kind of soak in the fact that there's a gracious love of God for you. And that you don't have to try to justify yourself because really, finally, you're not going to. You can't. But there's a gracious love of God that holds you forever. Well, thanks for listening in. I hope this was a little helpful journey in Summer Romans. I'll maybe post some more later. Thanks. Bye.